the early and the later vedic period both of these vedic periods could be understood only once we understand the concept of aryans now first understand who were aryans they were actually the people who resided in the east of alps in the region of eurasia they moved and settled in the region of sapta sindhu the seven rivers where they flow now this region of sapta sindhu where they established that was the area which became a prominent uh, section for civilization and the vedic history that we would read today initially these aryans did not had a settled way of life uh, however they used many animals animals were domesticated horse was a common animal that was heard during the time of vedic period this civilization the aryans were considered as highly civilized people and many of us for example indians germans french english persians all of us say that we are descendants of aryans so they spoke the indo aryan language and were found in the regions of europe iran and of course the present day india during the later vedic period iron was discovered and with the discovery of iron settled life began so forests were cleared agriculture was started so from a semi nomadic to a settled lifestyle was seen and then the development of iron sickles uh, plow for ox um, then hoes were developed for agriculture also at this time we see the painted grey ware pottery painted grey ware pottery was found in the excavations at hastinapur mathura shravasti kaushambi and this explained that the clay which was used was of very good quality and geometric patterns were drawn on this structure again these aryans did not worship figures in temples so they did not worship deities in temples the only important thing about them was they worship the myths uh, the the hymns and the recitation so most of their way of worship was oral and none of them was seen in the temples so this vedic period when we talk about can be classified into early vedic and later vedic but what does the word vedic means vedic comes from a later uh, latin word vid which means to know and then uh ved veda means wisdom or knowledge and therefore the vedas the four vedas that we talk about the rig rig ved uh, um, atharva ved samved and yajur ved are considered as a storehouse of aryan wisdom besides the vedas the four vedas there are vedang upaved darshans dharmashastra brahma upanishad aranyak sutra puran epic all of these are part of later vedic literature so if we classify early vedic and later vedic under the early vedic among the four vedas we do have only rigveda which is part of the early vedic period later vedic would include the three other ved which is the samved yajurved and atharva ved and then the parts of the vedas which is the brahman uh, upanishad aranyak sutra puran and epic so coming on to the very first which is rigveda it is considered as the first testament of the mankind in around 1500 bc this was supposed to be written it has 10 mandal and a uh, across the 10 mandals there are 1028 mantra or hymns which are there and they praise the god uh, representing nature all of them were conveyed orally and one of the very important rigvedic chants that we do recite now is what is known as gayatri mantra om burbho bhuvas so that is the time period of the early vedic literature now the life during the early vedic literature was very different from the later vedic literature in terms of the social life the religious life the political life and the economic life we'll understand both of these and then the differences between the two as we move forward coming on to the later vedic period we do have samved yajurved and atharvved samved talks about the sweet songs which were meant by the priests who used to sing those while they were performing the yagna so there are 1875 hymns in it or mantras in it 
all of it but 75 are native to samved the rest have been derived from rigved the next is yajurved yajurved are the mantras that have to be used while you are performing the yagna and there are 2086 hymns or mantras there atharvaved is dealing with the charms and the spells for uh, evil spirit or to control the disease and then we talk about the part of the vedas under the part of the vedas brahmans brahmans were the commentaries of the vedic uh, hymns in terms of single or simple prose structure so they were in the poetry format uh, and they refer to the social and the political condition of that time the next was upanishad uh, upanishad explain the mystery of life now uh, this talks about 300 upanishads of which the tetriya upanishad chandogya upanishad brihandar upanishad and uh, tetriya upanishad are some of the major upanishads they talk about the relation between the soul and the creator and talk about the atma uh it also talks about the karm that is the action the maya which is the illusion and mukti which is the salvation the next is aranyak aranyak are um, the guidelines to the hermits when they were in the forest areas and they their idea is to understand the vedic wisdom from the view point of an hermit the next is sutra now everything uh, that was added in the existing literature could not be brought with the existing literature so a separate compilation was done in a separate book and they were called as sutra so they are the dharma sutra srotra sutra and the griha sutra the next is puran under puran there are 18 purans each with five section the fifth section of which contains the information on the king and dynasties and is therefore important the next is epics among the great epics two of them ramayan and and mahabharata are ex- important and they explain the exploits of the life of aryans they give us a great deal of information about the religious political economic life and among the epics one of the important extract is the bhagavad gita that we understand now no don't get confused with gayatri mantra which was part of the rigveda and bhagavad gita which is part of the epic now bhagavad gita talks about the philosophy of karma the importance of karma or your actions and immortal uh, soul which is uh, present right now <clears throat> talking about the early vedic life and the later vedic life we'll understand each of these one by one first let's talk about the early vedic or what we say the rig vedic civilization the social life so family was relatively simple it was a patriarchal family the eldest member was known as grahapati grahapati was the master everyone would have to obey he was responsible for performing all the rites and rituals and some of the societies say some of the historians say that rig vedic the early rig vedic people were actually tribal societies and whole tribe lived in a village the next is the position of women extremely important during the rig vedic period uh, women were held with high respect all the holy functions women's role was important there was no parda system no sati system and monogamy was practiced that means only one wife could be there again women uh, during the rig vedic period or the early vedic period some of the important ones are ghosh upala lopamudra mudgaling uh, vishara so those were some of the important women and their contribution are extremely important coming on next to the food they uh, they consumed wholesome food and they drank som uh, which was derived from somlata som was considered as an intoxicating drink and was given uh, to the gods as well the next is their clothing their clothing was simple uh, cloth made up of either cotton or wool they used to wear turban ornaments of gold and silver were utilized their common games were hunting dancing singing gambling and chariot race and there was no caste system which was present four varnas were there and these four varnas were to regulate the normal life so these were uh, the four varns the brahman kshatriya vaishya and shudra so life was simple divided into four varn no multi level caste system was there this multi level caste system was introduced during the later vedic period the next is the economic life now 
In the economic life, barley, rice, cotton and oil seeds were the common agriculture. Common domesticated animals were horse, cow, bull, sheep and goat, of which cow was considered as one of the biggest possessions and held in high esteem. The trade system was mainly barter and the coins that were used for trade was known as nishk. The trade was carried either by land or water. Uh, by occupation, people were either building chariots, making ornaments, making weapons, potteries, or they were doctors based on the Ayurvedic lines. Uh, the next is the religious life. Very important. Early Vedic civilization used to worship nature gods like sun, fire, earth, dawn, water, rain. So Indra was the fire of uh, was the god of war and god of rain. And it was believed that if a person worships Indra, then there would be no war and timely rainfall. So agriculture would be prosperous. Similarly, Varun was the god of water. So nature gods were worshipped. During the later Vedic period, the the three gods that were predominantly worshipped was Brahma, Vishnu, Mahesh, that is the creator, operator and the destroyer. Uh, during the time of Rig Vedic, the early Vedic period, there were no temples as I mentioned before, only mantra and hymns were there and that were worshipped and circulated orally. There were no places of worship that have been identified with Aryan civilization or the Vedic period. They used to perform a lots of yagna and sacrifices. Animal sacrifices were done. These sacrifices were usually simple and were performed by all the members of the family. Sometimes during the festivals, special sacrifices were done. But the idea was with these yagna, the God would get happy and God would bless them with peace and prosperity. So that was the religious life during the early Vedic period and coming on to the political life life king was the head king was a hereditary and king was responsible for the tribe or the Jan so tribe were also known as Jan the common ministers were the Purohit and the commander-in-chief the idea was to assist the king and they were able leaders however during the later Vedic period Numerous ministers besides the commander-in-chief and Purohit like prison officers, uh, uh, custom officers and numerous other officers came in charge. Uh, the local government was known as Gramini or the village. The idea was to resolve the small disputes at the local level and uh, the village headmen would function based on the powers or the uh, execution orders coming from the king. The Sabha and the Samiti are again important. Now, some of the courts during that time, the early Vedic civilization were very important. So if the king was cruel, the people had the right to replace the king. The idea of the king was to defend the people, to lead them in war and also to bring justice to them. Now, Sabha included the distinguished members and Samiti included the whole tribe. So king had to address this complete Samiti, that is the complete people. And Sabha was the distinguished members. Uh, the president of the Sabha was known as the Sabhapati. And the resolution was taken only by majority vote. Uh, if the king was considered cruel, uh, there was glimpses of democracy which were seen because uh, people had the authority to remove the king but very important code of conduct was seen during the time of war this vanished during the later vedic period what was the code of war if uh, there is an enemy who is asleep people won't actually harm them also if an enemy is wounded you cannot harm them. If the enemy is defenseless, you cannot harm them. If it is a common man, you cannot harm them. If it is an old age child or women, you cannot harm them. So the discipline of the war was very strict. However, all this dissolved during the later Vedic period. During the later Vedic period, even the common man, women, children were at the mercy of the war. The next is this time, during the early Vedic period, the war was fought on foot, horse or chariot. Bows and arrows, spears were used. But the most important thing here was they did not maintain a standing army. 
This standing army and the concept of standing army was seen during the later Vedic period. So code of conduct changed during the later Vedic period. So, so far we talked only about the early Vedic period. Now coming on to the life in the later Vedic period. In the later Vedic period, the caste system got rigid. There was no transformations allowed. During the early Vedic period, transformation was allowed. For example, uh, from one one to another one, that is the Brahman, Kshatriya, Vaishya and Chudra, if there is a transfer, uh, this was acceptable, but this became more stringent during the later Vedic period. Also, uh, community lunch and intermarriage were not allowed. So, at this time during the later Vedic period, multi caste system evolved rather than a simple four one system which existed in the early Vedic period. The position of women degenerated, deteriorated. People used to now have several wives. The birth of girl child was considered as unfortunate. However, uh, there were some still uh, good things that were there with the women and that were they were allowed to choose their husband. Uh, the Sati Pratha, the Parda Pratha were not prevalent and uh, early marriage was not seen. The next is at this time during the later Vedic period, the priests were honored but the real power went in the hands of whom? The real power went in the hands of the Kshatriyas, the kings and the nobles degenerated, polygamy was practiced, they started having more than one wife, gambling, drinking, killing enemies became common. So all kind of uh, we can say the problems within the society started to come up and the common life was now demarcated into four ashrams of life, the Brahmachar, Grast, Vanaprastha and Sanyasi. The Bra Brahmachar is where the man is in the stage of learning. Grahast is the married life, Vanaprast is the life in the forest and uh, Sanyasi is towards the service of the people. So four ashrams of life were clearly demarcated during the later Vedic period. During the later Vedic period, the economic life saw a real change. For agriculture, iron weapons came in, irrigation started through channels. There were bigger plows and machineries uh, made which were used and even 12 ox were used to flow and that was the kind of development that was seen during the later Vedic period for agriculture. The common uh, vegetations uh, included cotton, wheat, barley, rice and vegetables. Animals started to be domesticated. Horse was the common domesticated animal. Now trade, so far in the early Vedic period it was only the barter system. Now it is the guilds and the association. The coins in the form of Nishk, Satmana and Krishmana were seen and the cities that developed during this time were Ayodhya, Hastinapur, Kaushambi, Mathura and Indraprastha. So those were some of the common cities that developed during the later Vedic period. Coming on to the religious life, as I mentioned before, the early Vedic people focused more on nature gods. However, the later Vedic period talked about Brahma, Vishnu, Mahesh, that is the Brahma, uh, the creator, Vishnu, the operator and Shiva, the destroyer. The next is, uh, the people of the later Vedic period had a lot of faith faith in charms and magic. They believe that with charms and magics, the disease could be removed. You can um, get over the enemies and they also had a lot of faith in karma and mukti. The yagna and the sacrifices, the havans that were done became more complex. The religious practices during the later Vedic time became more complex and more rigid. Coming on to the political life, the power of the king increased and they did not recognize the Sabha and the Samiti which was seen during the uh, Rig Vedic period. Uh, kings were purely hereditary now. New ministers were appointed, for example, prison officer, chief justice, treasurers were the new ministers. However, during the early Vedic time, it was commander in chief and Purohit as the only ministers. Now, uh, the spread of the later Vedic civilization was again important. It is spread to the whole of the North India. The empire spread through various Mahajanpats which were later called as and these were the Kuru, Panchal, Kosa, Magad, Kashi, uh, Ang and Ashwamedh Yaks were performed. These Ashwamedh Yaks were the horses were left free and the territory through which they could roam and come uninterrupted by anyone would be the territory of that king. So those kind of practices started. The warfare as we said new weapons came into being, a standing army was maintained and the warfare practices became more um, more cruel uh, the code of the conduct 
for war deteriorated during the time of later vedic period coming on to the differences as i said the caste system was less rigid during the Rig vedic period there were the four uh, categories or the four varnas that were there however during the later vedic there was a multi caste system which was uh, originated the next is the status of the women under the status of the women it was extremely respectable in the early vedic period but during the later vedic period it degenerated however they still had uh, the choice to have their own husband and the sati pratha parda pratha was not there the life was simple during the time of rig vedic period however later vedic period people get them got themselves involved with luxurious life uh, kshatriyas were not that powerful during the rig vedic period however their power increased during the Uh, later vedic period coming on to trade and occupation it was predominantly barter system during the rig vedic period however later vedic period along with the barter system uh, which ceased to exist there was more interaction and more types of coins which were released growth of the cities started during the later vedic period so as we said hastinapur koshambi mathura were some of the cities that grew the religion became more complex as animal sacrifices were done havans were done uh, in the later vedic period the religion in the early vedic period did not had any worship no temples were there uh, uh, during the rig vedic period no new gods were there nature gods were worshiped however during the later vedic period there were new gods which were worshiped the philosophical uh, speculation say that the later vedic period had speculation on god soul universe uh, penance knowledge salvation however that was not the case during the early vedic period the powers of the king increased during the later vedic period and the kings became more uh, prominent the sabha and the samiti and their importance deteriorated new officials were seen during the later vedic period like the chief treasurer the chief justice uh, the prison officer however during the rig vedic period it were they were only the commander in chief and purohit who were important the mode of warfare changed uh, their initial warfare was on foot horses or chariots later they were used to maintain standing army elephants were part of the army horses were part of the army and even poisoned arrow was used the code of conduct for the warfare deteriorated uh, during the early vedic period uh, the weak were not harmed however that practice was uh, actually Uh, removed during the later vedic period so those are some of the important differences between the rig vedic and the later vedic civilization in case you have any questions or doubts feel free to post those in the comment section i'll be more than happy to have those available for you wish you very good luck